Welcome to the workbench segment. Chris, you just spun a necrotic wound. Well, what are we going to do about that? I think well, we need to clean it up. You need to debride necrotic wounds. You're absolutely right. And the technology segment on Workbench, we're going to be talking about the excellent debridement device, the Acoustic Wound Therapy System. Very good. So I understand you know a little bit about this device. A little bit. Yeah, I, I do. I do as well. Um, and we've got a we've got it set up here. Um, this is one of uh, your hand pieces. Now this is one of the the earlier hand pieces. Do we have uh, anything coming down the pipeline as far as renovations? We actually have a new hand piece coming out that uh, the tubing will now come out of the curette versus back at the handpiece, which will alleviate the flushing and the dwell time. So it will speed up your workflow process and it will be more adaptable for the OR. So we're very pretty nice. excited about very that nice. coming out in the future. The setup is very, very simple. Uh, this cable here plugs into the generator unit, plugs into the back of the handpiece. We then have the IV tubing that plugs into the back of the handpiece and to our normal saline. Uh, we're using normal saline here as a coupling medium. Uh, once we do that, we uh, allow a drip rate through the handpiece of about uh, four drips per second. Is that right, Chris? Um, actually, it depends on how much extra date the wound has. Ah. Sometimes we can lower that down to one, okay. one to three, but a, a drier wound, we're going to use a little higher drip rate, and one with more extra date, we're going to slow it down to one to three. Very good. The unit is already powered on by simply pushing the on-off button. We then have... Our therapy and this uh, probe then is uh, passed over the wound base and there is uh, the effect now to really understand what is going on here with this technology I think I understand that there's a lecture going on about ultrasound guided dream would you like to attend that I lecture, would Chris? love to attend the lecture well you know I've been working on some other technology developments and let's give this a try would you sure Are you interested good so, Jeffrey, do you have um, the new Wonder Glasses available? Yep. Are they functional? I believe so. They're working. All right, great. Well, Chris, here you go. Here's a set. These are very specially designed glasses. And what you need to do is turn them on. So we turn them on like that. Okay. Turn it on. And then you're going to put them on. And once you put them on, you can go anywhere you want to go. Really? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Very cool. So let's do this. Let's put them on. Ready? Ready. Let's say, take us to the ultrasound guided debridement lecture. Take us to the ultrasound guided debridement lecture. <laughs> Thank you. And now that I have your attention, we are going to be talking about ultrasound guided debridement. The definition of ultrasound guided debridement is a low frequency ultrasonic energy. And this is delivered directly to the wound surface as well as the subdermal tissues resulting in selective debridement, as well as bacterial killing, microcavitation effects, and cellular stimulation via acoustic streaming. All of this is intended to not only debride the wound, but in to enhance the healing as well. Uh, welcome, Miss Baker. Uh, do you think you have special privileges? Uh, just show up whenever you want to these lectures. Are these not important to you? They should be important. Let's try to be on time. Thank you. Back to the lecture. The biophysical effects on tissues is, as I mentioned, acoustic streaming and cavitation. You're going to learn a little bit more about these terms because they're very important, Miss Baker. Acoustic streaming initiates a unidirectional movement of fluids via an ultrasonic field. And this activity stimulates the cellular activity, such as cellular proliferation. The fibroblasts are stimulated to lay collagen down and enhance the collagen synthesis, and there's, uh, as well as membrane uh, permeabilities, calcium influxes, and other things that are stimulatory in nature. All of these processes enhance clinical outcomes. Cavitation is probably another term you must know. It's probably even a little bit more important than uh, acoustic effects. And cavitation occurs at a high-intensity field where micro-sized bubbles uh, significantly increase and decrease in size. When they decrease, they uh, violently implode during the low-pressure part of the ultrasonic wave, as you see here. That implosion causes bacterial killing, and we'll talk a little bit about that in greater detail. This process of cavitation is probably the most important thing you need to know 
about the therapeutic effects of uh, ultrasonic energy when we talk about wound debridement. As we mentioned, cavitation is the formation of these, these small bubbles. And I'm going to show you a video right now that demonstrates the effect of the cavitation uh, and the formation of the bubbles. As you see in the video, these bubbles bubble uh, through the coupling medium as the probe interfaces with the wound surface. The vibration of the bubbles causes uh, different effects of the cells. And these, uh, when these bubbles implode, there's tiny shock waves. Uh, and these uh, essentially uh, cause emulsification of the fibrotic and necrotic tissue and slough across the wound bed. But most importantly, they fragment bacteria. The bacterial cell walls are not able to, to uh, tolerate these tiny shock waves, this energy, and they lyse the cell wall and therefore uh, kill the bacteria. The important thing to remember about cavitation is it does not have any uh, effect on healthy or host cells. There's no damage to healthy tissue. Here's some illustration of work done by Dr. Teresa Conacher. She's done a lot of work in the area of ultrasound, and here she's investigating the cellular effects of low-frequency ultrasound on methicillin-resistant organisms. You see the upper plate identifying live, fat, happy bacteria, but after exposure to low-frequency ultrasound uh, in the range of 35 kilohertz, you see that essentially all the bacteria have been destroyed and fragmented. So this is the uh, UGD-treated MRSA. One single bacteria survives that treatment. The control, as you see up on top, unaffected. Some other work in this area has been done by Dr. Stephen Kavros. Again, here's an example of very plump, healthy pseudomonal organisms uh, prior to ultrasonic energy, and then once treated, the bacterial cell wall is lysed, disrupted. The bacteria are essentially rendered uh, non-viable. This is some work that I have done in the field of ultrasonic energy, looking at the effect of ultrasonic energy on bacterial kill, uh, the effect of cavitation, if you will, on the tissues. And as you notice, this work was done in collaboration with the U.S. Army at, through Brooks Army Institute of Research. And what we noticed is that by exposing these bacteria strains to short bursts of ultrasound, really less than uh, two minutes of ultrasound, we had nearly complete 100% eradication of all bacterial strains, including very resistant Acinetobacter. If you look at ultrasound, you need to understand some of the basics. There's high frequency and low frequency ultrasound. The ultrasound found in wound care clinics is low frequency. And then there's high intensity and low intensity from a power setting standpoint. Mist therapy, which many of you may be familiar with, is non-contact, non-thermal. It does not debride wounds. The devices that we are talking about today are ultrasound-guided debridement devices. They contact the tissue uh, and as well as have the acoustic streaming and cavitation effects. They're true debridement devices. One of those devices is the Arabella device, the acoustic wound therapy system, as you see demonstrated here. What you need to know about this system is it's very unique in that it has a probe tip that is a curette, uh, uh, has a curette head, if you will. The coupling energy and the acoustic energy comes out through that uh, curette uh, device, as you see here. Uh, and you can see the little hole in the side of, inside of that curette is where all the coupling medium, all the energy is focused neatly on the wound. What we have found with using the uh, uh, Arabella acoustic curette therapy wound therapy system is that we get excellent debridement. Here you see an example of the probe across a wound that would otherwise be very difficult to debride. And you see it is removing that fiber and slough in a very excellent fashion. Very, very efficient. One of the other things that we have noticed about using the Arabella device is that it brings along a marked decrease in pain reduction to patients. Here's an example of some, uh, some uh, research that we did using the acoustic wound therapy system and measuring pain on an analog scale. You see all patients report marked improvement in pain in response to debridements with compared to the other ultrasound devices. And certainly all these devices have a decrease in pain over what we commonly would use curettes, scalpels, surgical steel in the wound care clinic. So let's summarize what we've learned today. Ms. Baker, what have you learned? Ms. Baker, wake up. My goodness. Let's summarize for Ms. Baker here uh, what we've learned today. Ultrasound guided debridement can uh, perform excellent selective as well as excisional, de excisional debridements. The cavitation effects of ultrasound are amazing in that it imparts great bacterial killing. No other debridement devices accomplish cavitation and bacterial killing. You're not going to kill bacteria with either scalpels or curette or scissor debridement. There's a cellular stimulation via the properties of acoustic streaming. 
uh, this uh, therapy is relatively painless. Not, not say painless completely, but marked improvement in pain response uh, during debridements when comparing ultrasonic devices, especially the Arabella device, uh, to the other techniques that are available to us. It's very versatile in the clinical setting. This device can be taken in, uh, certainly bedside. Uh, as an inpatient, it can take it to the OR, uh, perform uh, surgical uh, debridements during the surgical procedures. And finally, uh, it can be well used and is used frequently in the wound care setting. So very versatile from a use utilization standpoint. And finally, we find that ultrasound guided debridement is very cost effective. We know that CMS is starting to limit the number of debridements that we can accomplish on any one wound. Uh, and by using devices like this, we find that we have to debris less. And so this fits very nicely with the new policies that are being presented to us uh, for uh, uh, that guide how we practice medicine. I hope you found this uh, lecture educational, stimulating, and I hope it complements your clinical practice. Thanks for coming. We'll see you all tomorrow. Okay, we're back. Well... Great lecture. What do you think of that? What Great do you think of these glasses? Aren't they cool? They are awesome. What I'd really like is if we could actually go in and see a patient. Well, you know, these glasses are so special, they will take you anywhere you want to go. It's kind of like Dorothy on The Wizard of Oz, you know, where she clicks her heels and there's no place like home, there's no place like home. These glasses are very similar. You want to go to the clinic? I'd love to go to the clinic. Would you like to see the Arabella device in action in the clinic? That would be awesome to actually see I'm going to see take it. you there. You ready? Ready. Let's put the glasses on. Take us to the clinic. Now Chris, you gotta say it with me if you wanna go with me. All right, all right, all right. I'm ready. Ready? Ready. Take, Take us, us to, to the, the clinic. clinic. Chris, here we are. What do you think? This is very cool. This is very cool. So here we are in clinic, and we obviously are using uh, the acoustic wound therapy system, the Arabella device, to do some debridement. I thought I'd walk you through some of this. So we're set up here for uh, a wound debridement. Um, you can see that uh, there's a very easy setup that's been accomplished for me already, and then we step into place and uh, and perform the debridement. Hmm? And again, the drip rate, I'm controlling the drip rate. I, I find uh, that about uh, four drips per second, four drops per second is about accurate. But here's a good example of uh, a debridement in place. Now, you see those bubbles? Right. That is cavitation. And the ultrasonic effect of cavitation on the wound, again, is uh, purely uh, a, the, one of the most phenomenal um, anti-bio burden, uh, antibacterial effects that, that we can achieve clinically. So after your lecture and watching your lecture and seeing your patient here and the cavitational effect, um, am I understanding you correctly that what we're gaining is in studies show that with multiple debridements we're decreasing the bio burden? Absolutely. But here with the ultrasound added to it, you're actually manipulating the cells to a greater extent. Well, you get you get you get the cellular stimulation in addition to the bacterial killing. So you're exactly right. You get the best of both worlds here. Again, you see the uh, the probe over the top, and you know the the wonderful design uh, on the system is is the curette design. Uh, Elias was ingenious in coming up with this curette uh, uh, design. And one of the things that I really like about the uh, the acoustic system is the fact that you can do excellent peri-wound debridement and, and maintenance of the, 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 the peri-wound. And that is very often underlooked. You see how we're getting this hypertrophic dermis, the scaling. This is a nidus for infection. The bacteria and the exudate can collect under that. Uh, and unless you remove it, unless you clean that peri-wound, you're at risk for infection and risk for poor wound healing. So this is one of the, the I think, the true benefits of the system is in the ability to do that. Ah, here's another wound. And as you see, we've got this, you know, the big question is, can you perform good excisional debridement with uh, ultrasound? And this is a good example of excising. We're, we're actually excising uh, the margins of this ulcer prior to laying down a graft. And in this case, we're going to be using a graft jacket. And I find that preparing the wound base with ultrasound is it's, it's paramount of importance for the success of your grafting procedures. Whether it's a living graft, a dermograft, or uh, an applegraft, or a skin substitute, a collagen graft, such as uh, a graft jacket, it's, it's, it's really very critical.
So with adequate wound bed preparation, you're finding better results with your grafts. Absolutely.